whoa, this is not the intro that you were expecting. Where's the music? Ah, <laughs> you're seeing me. This, if you are a, uh, a long time <laughs> listener of the podcast, you'll be like, uh oh, what did Kieran fuck up now? <laughs> so, why I, are you so mad, bro? <laughs> I'm furious. Long story short, I fucked the audio recording. We have a new audio uh, video setup, rather. We have a new video setup for this episode that you're about to not enjoy. So unfortunately, one of the cameras, Adam's camera, which is have working we, now. Yeah, yeah, but you say Adam's whoa, whoa, whoa. camera as if like- No, I'm no, no, my ca- I don't camera even, on Adam. I, don't even, I mean, I'm yet to take it home. It's not mine yet. <laughs> I got a brand new setup. I'm trying to improve the video quality of the podcast for your viewing pleasure. Fucked it up. Long story short- the camera that is pointed at Adam cut off for this episode. So unfortunately, you're stuck with my mug. It's just going to be me. It's going to be awkward at some point. Why don't you just, why don't you, I thought you were just going to put the artwork and just have that. Um, I mean, we may as well have one. <laughs> All right. Look, Kieran's face right now. <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're about to see what I ended up going <laughs> you're, with. You're about to see what I have to look at for a whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be awkward because some points I thought the camera would be on you. So I was like yeah. picking my nose and stuff. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the episode, guys. Thank you so much for for watching the video version of the podcast on YouTube. I will not let this happen again. You know, we can't let these little errors get in the way of progress. We're going to keep progressing, keep trying new things until we uh, until we get it right. So thanks for, for watching. Enjoy the episode. Enjoy, guys. Welcome to the Beyond Jiu-Jitsu podcast. Podcast. This is episode number 63. Bit of a longer music intro than usual. Yeah, what happened there? Um, Adam Childs here sitting across with Kieran Lefebvre. What happened over there, Kieran? I oh, just know. just was uh, using my soundboard and I enjoyed Pressing the- Pressing the wrong buttons? No, I just enjoyed the tune. I just wanted to listen to it a little bit longer than I normally do. It's a good tune. It uh, needs a bit more credit. That's it. The, the people watching on YouTube are like, no, man, he done fucked up. Well, they're not going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, if you're watching the video version of this podcast, you would have almost immediately noticed that we have new camera angles. That's right. How's, we- the, how's it going to look on the on the video? This is the first time we've got the new cameras. Yeah. Set well, you up. have to wait. And, no. <laughs> are, they, are they just going to be side by side? Like, no, what, what no, no, no. So you're going to split, con- split uh, Professional. It. Yeah, yeah, Bro, yeah. fuck this guy. This guy is so much editing, but you know what? That's the dedication I have to this podcast and for our viewers and listeners. And if you want your purple belt. Exactly. No. <laughs> exactly. My, my like, belt what? progression. Wait, that was on the table. My, my belt <laughs> progression is directly correlated with the amount of downloads we get on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when the podcast hits a milestone, so do I. Yeah. Get that tape yeah. ready. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this episode is all about, I got my blue belt. Now what? Oh. So this is addressed to those that are newly promoted or those people that are approaching their blue belt promotion and are looking ahead. Let's get They're straight into it. looking at their belt with their four stripes and they're thinking, oh man. Oh, they are getting there. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think this, this episode is targeted directly at me. So yeah. That's- Mate, what well, have you got to say? I mean, I think let's get the obvious joke out of the way. You got your blue belt, quit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did have an episode all about the blue belt blues, and it's yeah. a legit thing. We've seen it already. I've seen some uh, people fall down as casualties to the blue belt blues just in my, my <laughs> limited Jake. time. Yeah, Jake. Shout Jake. out to Jake. Yeah, he Jake, sucks. I miss you, bro. Miss I you. don't. He just had – Jake is, you know, just give a bit of context, one of my first students – I think him him and his mate Dan, Dan who still trains, they started together and they were actually my first, you know, students who I took from having never trained like 100% brand new to giving them a blue belt. Prior to that, any other blue belt I'd given out, the person had trained before. Um, so, I mean, f- for me as a gym owner, it was, you know, that, it'll always be sort of significant, but they've also become good friends of mine. Jake though, man just has not come back. Mm-hmm. He's gotten getting puffy. He just had his bucks on the weekend, Jake getting married. A five day bucks, five days. That's it went insane. Wednesday to Sunday. He's got too much money. Too much money, too much time. Yeah. Get but in the gym, bro. He just got his blue belt. So what should he do? Should, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> turn up to training. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so just got your blue belt, what to do. I think what, you know, I guess it's hard not to sort of tie in with, you know, the the blue belt blues and why people quit at blue belt quite often. But I think 
something that people need to get on board with and you know I say this all the time whenever you're talking about belt progression or what it takes to achieve this and that is that jiu-jitsu just gets progressionally harder and I see some people particularly hobbyists and even if you are just a hobbyist in jiu-jitsu that's fine but you still like need to get better and always want to get better and that comes with having to put in more work. Some people think that once they get their blue belt, it's kind of like, for some people, it's almost like getting their black belt. So they kind of get this blue belt and think that, okay, like the work I put in to get here, that same level of work, like my progression will just keep going up. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately that's not like how jujitsu works. If it, if it was on a graph and like you're, you're putting in the work and it's going up on the graph and then you get your blue belt, it's not like, Oh, that was the amount of work necessary to get a belt. So now I just keep putting in that work and then they'll come the purple and the brown and the black. No, man. Like it's, it's, it's not always, linear. It's like an exponential graph. Yeah, it's yeah. always going up, right? And I think about it like this. Getting your blue belt, almost think about it like, I don't know. It's like qualifying for something, you know, or it's like an entrance exam for for something you know so you've got to pass that entrance exam to then you know be able to go to that university i guess it's like a medical entrance exam you need to get to this standard before you can then before you're even take the eight year journey to study medicine that's that's right yeah it's like yeah you got to pass us you know it's like someone who wants to do their their doctorate in mm. whatever whatever field, right? It's like, well, you've got to fully graduate university before you're even allowed to be able to go through the suffering of another four years of mm. study and have the right to, you know, write a thesis and all this stuff, mm. you know? And, and I'm saying that just because I see people kind of get their blue belt and think like, yeah, sick, now I'm just like cruising along. And if I, as long as I'm, you know, in two years, I'll get my purple belt, you know, no, man. Like, there's a... I'm not going to mention any any names, but there was recently a group of people that a lot of people in the gym know, like, you know, f- through the combination of people in the gym, you know, X amount of people know that guy and that guy and that guy from this other gym, right? And four of them, four guys at this other gym just got their brown belts. And this gym is known as kind of just being a bit um, generic and – maybe going more the karate dojo avenue. We're talking about a McDojo. Don't mince your words. So, yeah, sort of. We have yeah. a McDojo in our midst. Gotcha. Yeah. And anyway, so one of the guys I know, well, actually I know two of these four guys. One of the guys, awesome, super deserved his brown belt, you know, put in the time and gotten better and, you know, fully deserves it. But one other guy in particular, someone from our gym was who's a blue belt, was like, oh, that guy was a white belt with me. Like that guy started at the same time as me and was a white belt and he just got his brown. Wow. Now, and that's over like a five-year period. Now, I'm not saying that it's not possible to get your brown belt in five years, but this isn't, for me, if, you, if you're getting your brown or black belt in that amount of time, man, you are in the 1%. Like you are at the-, the You the, just won worlds, bro. That's right. Like you're yeah. at, the, at the elite of competitive jujitsu. Otherwise, I, don't know, I just talk about it. There's just not enough time, right? There's just too much to learn. That's that's why it doesn't, you know, there's not people graduating med school in 12 months because there's too much to learn. Like it's not possible. Like, yeah, I'm sure there's some like savant out there who can pass med school in a month or whatever, but, you know, like it, anyway, like the different standards, right? So when you get your blue belt, man, it's going to get way harder. So you need to get on board with that and it's going to get harder. It should get harder. And I gave you with it. Were you there at the gym when I gave the rant about people not training enough? Yeah. And you were saying that no one at this gym is training at the level of even a uh, purple belt. I think you said yeah, or to, like, enough to get a purple belt. And I was like, what the fuck? No, no, no. <laughs> I was holding the camera. I was like, you motherfucker. No, no yeah. There was, totally kidding. <laughs> yeah. There was like blue, purple. I don't think there was a brown belt in that class, but yeah, there were like blues and purples. And I was saying like, no one's even training at the level of a purple belt. Yeah. Like it's, it's going to get harder and you should be okay with that, man. Like jujitsu is fucking hard. So yes, your blue belt is an awesome achievement, but like I said, think about it like, you know, yes, man, like I got in, 
as in like, you know, I got into that school, yeah. you know, and so many people quit at Blue Belt because they're not ready for that reality. And if you do quit at Blue Belt, I mean, that's fine. I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, if you, if you, you know, you're not even allowed to try jujitsu unless you're ready to commit for the rest of your life. It, like, okay, man, no. All right. If you leave at Blue Belt, that's fine. It's not, it's not for everyone. But if you're someone who's wanting to pursue jujitsu, whether it's just a hobby, but you want to pursue it, at least by my standards, um, strap yourself in. Yeah, man, it's never going to be a. And it, you could be a blue belt for twenty years if you're only still putting in the effort that you were putting in as a white belt to get to blue belt. Like, I'm sorry, man. Like you just, you're not going to cut it. Mm. So that's step number one. Step well, number one is acceptance. <laughs> yeah. This sounds like a progression in grief or something like that. Yeah. Wait, we, we, we skip through denial, right? Yeah. But I mean, as, as someone who's uh, in the terms of a jujitsu journey, still a relatively new blue belt, well, still new, right? In November, so it's only been like three months. Very new. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I wouldn't say relative. Uh, wouldn't you already agree with that statement? Oh yeah. That, I mean, you're someone who is invested in, yeah. in jujitsu. I mean, God damn, bro, you started a podcast because of jiu-jitsu. 100%. Uh, a YouTube channel and everything, bro. You know, you're someone who's competitive, wanting to yeah. compete. Like, so you've, you didn't even need to hear that without em- embracing it. But wouldn't you see that it's already gotten harder for you oh, in yeah. the last three I think, months, right? I think and you've that, already been like, oh, I need to work even harder now. It was a relief to get my blue belt because it was, it was like me taking the first step in the journey. Really, yeah. Like t- literally just my, the first step, right? Along the, the path of jujitsu to me was walking and actually signing up to the gym. That's step number one. Step number two was getting that blue belt. And that's when I start to progress down that, that path, if that makes sense, as like a really shit sort of visualization analogy. When I got my blue belt in my mind, it was okay. Now it begins. Yeah. You know, like up until that point, I was obviously working hard to earn that blue belt and learn everything I needed to learn. But now it's okay. Now it's time to actually get good at jujitsu. Yeah, and it's time to. to Can I give you another analogy, go. Kieran? Please. I've just thought of a great one. I love your analogies. They're good, aren't they? Yeah, they're really good. Fucking great. I'll give you another example. <laughs> right? Let's say, so here in Australia, when you get your motorbike license, which you have recently gotten, there's certain restrictions on the bikes you can ride mm. as you progress through your licenses. Mm. We don't have like a huge amount. There's only three different licenses, but. Let's let's put it in a in another term like when you look at professional motorbike racing like the MotoGP you've got the different categories and because the the elite the MotoGP are the fastest motorbikes or mm. god damn it formula 1 again you know like you got formula 1 is the elite but then you got formula 2 formula 3 right imagine if you get if you progress from formula 3 up into formula 2 which is a faster car mm. And you're in that faster car, but you only ever drive it like it's a Formula Three car. Are you ever going to make it to Formula One? No, hell, never. Yeah. Hell no, bro. Yeah. And so it's kind of like that. Like if you get your blue belt, right? You've made it from Formula Three into Formula Two. You're wearing that blue belt. You're in that Formula Two car, but you're still only driving it like a Formula Three car. You're wearing that blue belt, but you're still only ever training and rolling like a white belt. Are you ever going to get up into that purple belt, into that Formula One car? No. So that's what I mean is in it's like just permanently harder. Mm. Like, you know, you – like every step up in in like a race car, you have to drive faster and it's harder to drive faster. Mm. Same, as, same as jiu-jitsu, right? Right. So after we've accepted the fact that it's going to be harder. We need to put in the work. Like it doesn't end here. It doesn't end with blue belt. It's not, it's not time to coast. What's next? How do, how do we Probably channel that? Probably put in writing your cancellation to the gym, right? <laughs> your membership, make sure you, you know, yeah. cross the T's, dot the I's, get out of that contract mm. and move on. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Take up karate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay. It's going to differ for everyone, but definitely blue belt, to purple belt. I might just put them together like sure. for this next sort of point. Cause again, it will depend if you're a competitor who wants to win worlds or you're a hobbyist or someone who wants to become an instructor. So let's just kind of wrap blue and purple together and say that it's, it's, it's time to start sort of finding what your style is and what you're good at and what you enjoy to do in jujitsu. I'm a 
big advocate of having fun. When you, I mean, most of us got into jujitsu because it's fun. So I'm a big, big advocate of even if you are a competitor, if you can find, you might often when you're a competitor be forced to do stuff that you don't necessarily enjoy because it's better for competition to get you that win. But as a whole, I try to train and fight doing positions and techniques that I enjoy doing, right? So blue and purple belt, it's time for you to find your identity. Right? As, you got to find yourself. Yeah, find yourself as a jiu-jitsu fighter and an athlete. So, you know, you could very simply put that as a, are you going to be a guard player or a passer, right? That's a very just simple way, obviously, because then you might decide on guard, but okay, what sort of guard? Mm. Right. So it's a you still need more. to be able to pass. You see, yeah. I mean, yeah. what's the point of being a guard player and you can sweep everyone and then go nowhere from there. Mm. Right. So you're that, that's the evolution I'm going through at the moment. I spoke to you about this at the gym is bullshit. I've never seen you sweep. No one. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I spoke to you about this at the gym and we were talking about uh, my game, how I'm very focused on passing, but when I get into into a guard situation, I'm not dangerous. Like on top, I feel like, and I'm talking in competition, someone my weight, um, you know, my skill level, I'm dangerous when I'm on top. If they pull guard, it's it's a bad idea for them. However, when I'm there in my guard and I'm playing guard, it's not as dangerous. And You're I need to- like survival mode. Exactly. I'm just trying to get get out and get on top. And even my sweeping isn't that effective to get back to my, my game. So I've been experimenting with- focusing on a specific guard, which is at the moment half guard for me. And I'm trying to get dangerous in that position. So it's, it's forced me, like you said, like competitors, sometimes you have to do things you don't want to do. I don't really want to play guard. I don't want to, you know, go into a role and, and then sit to guard and, you know, get past or whatever. And I'd much rather like fight to stay on top because it's plays into my game, but yeah, I've had to, you know, suck it up and, and play that guard boy. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's, there's no way around, training jiu-jitsu and not having – like you have to be able to pass guard mm. and play guard. You have to be mm. able to be on top and on bottom. Like yeah, that's, exactly. that's jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Uh, you'll obviously lean towards one or the other. I mean off right off the bat, guard is way less intuitive, which is why most beginners are told, you know, oh, just stay on top. Get on top, you stay know, on Especially top. if it's someone like, you know, day one mm. or whatever. Mm. If, if for whatever reason they're rolling on day one – uh, you might be like, look, just stay on top, bro. You know, or we say in the kids' class, like, try turn the other kid into a pancake. You know, <laughs> just squash the other kid, right? <laughs> no fat Jimmy, not like that. <laughs> uh, oh fuck. Yeah. So blue belt, blue belt, purple belt, and the reason I'm putting them together is because it can take a long time, right? Uh, don't like you know trust the process a little bit. You've you might find, you know, like, okay, yeah, cool. Half guard's working for me. But as your skill develops, you might realize that you've with time become incredibly good at inverting or whatever. So, Mm -hmm. you know, for me, I've always preferred to pass. I still prefer to pass despite being quite a tall person with long legs. Everyone used to be look at me and go, oh man, don't, I don't want to go in his guard. Everyone used to pull guard on me <coughs> in competition because they saw me as a tall, lanky guy. And you're like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it was also at a different time yeah. where bol- bolos were just sort of coming on the scene when I was a blue belt. They were still super new. Uh, the Meow brothers were still purple belts, you know, so – and Keenan was a purple belt, you know, so they were yeah. still really new. Uh, but every, So it was a bit more kind of – to some extent, close guard, De La Hiva, spider guard, and people go, man, that guy's got long legs. And mm. so I've always actually preferred to pass and I still prefer to pass. But I had a guard game. It was De La Hiva, But, you know, as, as time went on and I got better at inverting and stuff, it, you know, it turned out that I actually quite liked different sort of guard that incorporated inverting and X guard and whatever else. So that's why I'm kind of saying – blue to purple because you might you know at the moment you got your blue belt and you might not want to be a bolo person because you're like oh man like upside down oh it hurts my neck but the more you train and the more experience you gain you might you know the more flexible you get you might all of a sudden fall in love with it all right so don't think that uh, you're locking yourself in like if you pick x guard you can't change it right but yeah start finding 
you know, you probably, by the time you've got your blue belt, you've probably already figured out whether you prefer to be on the bottom or the top, right? But, you know, whichever one that is, start finding what are the techniques and the what is the style of passing that you're really good at. You know, do you like really doing like knee cuts and, you know, and smash passes? Are you a stack passer? Or are you a, you know, Hanato Kanutu backflip, you know, cartwheel passing? You know, what is it that's that's your style? And, you know, you start finding all the, this is what I do when they do that and then this and then that and the, the chess game of it. Then going back to what you said, you definitely have to do both though, right? Also as as a blue belt, I'm not going to be giving you through your blue belt journey, I'm not going to be giving you a purple belt if you're a beast of a of a guard player at blue belt. Like you're you're this blue belt in the gym who bolos everyone. Like you you bolo and take the backs of every single person in the gym, right? But you can't pass the guard of that two week old white belt man. You know, like there's nothing wrong with really going down the rabbit hole of what you want to become an expert at. But, and I'm not saying, oh man, it's better to, to become a jack of all trades. And, but you have to have some kind of all roundedness in jujitsu. Right? So, also, whatever, whatever gaps that you're feeling you have no idea, and you gotta, you gotta fix that shit. It's like that, uh, what's that? Have you seen that? Um, flex tape it's all over youtube it's all you know that one where oh, the got, meme? Are you talking about the meme where he like slaps it on the side of a <laughs> yeah like the yeah tank? The, yeah like the youtube ads he'll be yeah. like you got a hole in your water tank and he gets an axe and he's yeah. like, <laughs> and he's like whatever that tape is yeah. that's the shit plug that shit on you know on your jujitsu just tape it that's just my tape. thing i have just no idea what the fuck <laughs> you don't know what i'm talking no i know what you're talking about but i don't know what you were trying to say what i'm trying to say is if you get that tape yep and put it on your shitty back defense. Oh, God. you know, like what I'm saying is, you got to plug the hole. If you, oh, you know, in blue, your game, yeah. so the tank's your game, and the tape is you, yeah, fixing that's that right. part of your game. I don't think it was okay. It wasn't my best, <laughs> but it wasn't that hard to get there. <laughs> it wasn't, that was terrible. It wasn't that hard to get there. Uh, <laughs> you know, so it's not like you. Okay, you got your blue belt. Now what? Mm. It's not like you got your blue belt as this perfect all-rounded jujitsu oh, athlete. Yeah. You have you know? huge, so, huge holes. Yeah, yeah. That's right. If you're a, if you're a blue belt, you've got holes in your game. Yeah. Like every everyone has holes in their game, but like, and you constantly need to fix those, right? It's uh, again trusting the process because as you're, you know, let's say you're like, okay, I got my blue belt, man. I really like passing guard. Mm. I'm going to develop this, you know. Obviously, you, you're still new, so it's not like you're going to develop it on your own. But you're going to have you know, the guidance of your coach and teammates help you develop this style of passing and whatever. And maybe on that day that you got your blue belt, you are pretty well rounded for your current skill level. Mm. But as your as your skill level increases because of the things that you're investing time in, like your guard passing, and then as a result, you get better at guard passing. It probably results in your side control getting better and you're transitioning from side control to mount getting better and everything that comes with, with that. Right. Mm. But then, you know, what gets left behind is all the shit you're not working on. So, you know, maybe on the day that you got your blue belt, right. One of your best, you know, maybe your ability to escape mount was really good. Right. But then as everything progresses and like that gets left behind, all of a sudden that's like your worst. It's all relative. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all relative, right? So you constantly have to plug those holes. Mm. It's like, you know, you best have a big roll of that tape, right? And constant, <laughs> you know, it's almost like a like a old Walt Disney cartoon where like, you know, the people are putting their fingers in all these holes in a boat where it's like constantly gets flooded, bro. You're constantly patching new holes. Yeah, right. You know, we're just, you know, that's why jujitsu guys. So do you see these as two points? Like the, because you started off like, okay, you're blue, Slash purple, you just got promoted in, into those belts. I'm not going to lie. I have gone a bit off the rails, yeah, Karen. Yeah, because you, you want to specialize. It is, it is 9.40 and I've had three coffees. Today, so. <laughs> <laughs> and like two hours sleep. So you want to specialize in, you want to basically pick an area and say, hey, look, I'm going to be, my A game is going to be pressure passing on top, half guard on the bottom. And I'm going to work on those, right? But then you started talking about, okay, but whilst you are working on those areas, you need to be aware that as you specialize, your other areas relative are going to be left behind. And then you need to be aware of that, not to let it get too far. So then you're all of a sudden 
you know, your say for example, if you're a top player, then your guard gets so shit that you're getting passed That's by white right. belts. Yeah, yeah. Right. So those are the same point you would say? No, no, I would say they're two different points, right? right? So it's almost like it's the – it's kind of like the opposite of bodybuilding, right? If you think there's something that obviously most if, – if the listeners – any listeners who don't know, you used to compete in bodybuilding. Oh, I think they know. Right? <laughs> uh, it's kind of like the opposite. Like a bodybuilder, it's almost – okay, I could be completely – well, I probably am wrong because I don't know anything about bodybuilding. But it's all about – you know, the, the area that you're going to, obviously you have a lot of exercises that you have to do just as maintenance exercises, but a bodybuilder is constantly trying to find the worst part of their body, mm. right. And fix that. Like that book, the, the worst, weakest, not as in like physically the weakest, but the weakest in terms of an aesthetic, because that's what bodybuilding is about. Right. That's, that becomes the number one priority. Obviously, yeah, I'm sure you have all your maintenance work that you need to do. It's not like you can just go like, oh, my, you know, my pecs are perfect so I never have to work on them again. Of mm-hmm. course not, right? But it's kind of like you go out of your way to find the weakest part and that has to become a priority, right? Mm-hmm. But then, you know, as that – if if you take that out of balance and that gets too strong, then something else becomes the weakest. So, but it's kind of like the opposite in jiu-jitsu. You want to find – your specialty, right? But at the same time, your maintenance work is not letting, you know, everything else fall too far behind, right? You don't constantly want to work on the weakest point because the best jujitsu fighters in the world are specialists in, in one particular area or a couple of particular areas. Always give an example of like bolo guys. What makes them so good is not only their ability to bolo, but their ability to keep the fight in the, in that, bolo territory so it's kind of the opposite you want to really specialize but your maintenance work is making sure you bring everything with you don't let it drag too far behind yeah that makes sense because if you are too much of a jack of all trades if you come up against someone with a equal skill level you're not going to have that one area that you can beat them in if that makes yeah. sense yeah you're I not mean, going to have one I, area where you're you're excelling yeah i or again i always look at you know, GSP, one of the greatest UFC fighters of all time. And, you know, he was incredibly good at keeping the fight where he wanted it. You know, if, if he wanted the fight to be standing, it would be standing as in he, if he got taken down, he could get up or, you know, he could not get taken down. If he wanted the fight to be on the ground, he could take his opponent down. So, you know, you're kind of always controlling where the fight is and if you can if you're just a jack of all trades it kind of doesn't matter where the fight is but then if it doesn't matter where the fight is you then end up in a position or the zone where the other person is the specialist well then it's a specialist versus jack of all trades Mm. in that particular area who's going to win right the specialist yeah and that's just there's i go on about how there's not enough time to to learn everything for some people just to get your next belt, let alone to be incredibly successful and competitive at jujitsu. It is impossible. It is not possible to become an expert in every area <clears throat> of jujitsu. It's just, it's just not possible. Some of the greatest jujitsu fighters of all time, Hodger Gracie, Bushesha, right? Um, Mikey Musumeshi, like Bruno Malfasini, Cobrinha, all these people, do you reckon, like, if there's no way Bushesha or Hodja knows as much about bolos as Levi does? And Levi, I don't want to take anything away from Levi, but, like, so, so don't take this out of context, but we're talking about someone who's not a world champion yet, right, against a 10-time world champion. So just on paper you go, well, like, Levi has accomplished nothing compared to these guys. But there's no way I'm going to Hodja for bolo advice over Levi it's just not possible. At the same time, there's no way I'm going to Levi for mount control pressure over Hodger. Mm. You know, there's not enough time to be a specialist at everything. You got to kind of, that's really how people get crazy good at jujitsu is they get really good at that, that sort of one thing. I think blue to purple belt, you want to start finding what is your thing. Don't lose the fun. Doesn't mean you're never going to play other positions, but start finding your identity. Right. And, so, so far we've got, you need to accept that the road ahead of you is only getting harder. So you need to continue putting in work 
It's if permanently not increase, getting harder. Increase your amount of work. So you need to accept that. Point number two is find your area of specialty. So pick what you enjoy doing, whether it be uh, on top, whether it be guard. And in that, choose something to, to go down the rabbit hole in and like really, really learn, like ask your instructor all the questions, like look at people that have a similar style or or that's the, their, their known specialty, find an instructional that's reputable and, and study that. And point number three is whilst you are doing that is don't leave your other areas behind. You need to get that flex tape and plug the holes in your game. Yeah, you got to make do sure some maintenance work. Relative to to your specialty, your other your other jujitsu game isn't being you know left behind. And a lot of I mean, depending on the gym and the start and the way your instructor structures classes, a lot of that will happen organically. Mm. You know, like doing side control specific training. Mm. You know, like that's going to kind of happen organically or, you know, maybe you're wanting to get your guard better. So as a result of that, you're probably going to spend a good amount of time getting your guard passed. So organically with that, your side control is going to get better or whatever. So heaps of it will happen organically, but you will notice certain things will, you know, I I mean, I still have, I'm not going to say on air now, but I've got one particular position that is, (laughs) it's pretty much still the level of a white belt. It's so bad. It's so bad, so bad that I've become incredibly good at not getting there or it, ending up there. It's not in no-gi, is it? Bro, I'm like a no-gi god. What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 yeah, you're just like, it's not just no-gi in general. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, <clears throat> jokes aside, it's half guard on one particular side. I'm absolutely terrible at Like it's still to today my – weakest area and I got to a point actually I spent quite a lot of time trying to get better at it and it got to a point where I was like you know what fuck this shit I hate this position not only am I not good at it I really don't enjoy it Mm. I've now just gotten really good at either a not ending up in half guard on that side or if I do I can get out of it really quickly right as in you know if I get there I can instantly get back to open guard or close guard, or whatever. That reminds me of a concept. Um, Look, like, I mean, yeah, again, with bolo guys, you know, it's not like they've gotten good at, at half guard. You just can't even get to half guard. As soon as you start getting to half guard, they bring it back to De La Hiva where they mm. can invert and stuff or reverse De La Hiva. It just, it's, they don't, yeah, they've got some skills there, but they don't invest this time to go, I want to get really good at half guard just in case I end up there, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, you can take the other approach of, well, don't end up there. Or if you get there, you've just got these few sort of fundamental movements to get you back to where you want the fight to be. Mm. I was uh, talking to Nogi Rob a little while ago, and he was saying that Lachlan Giles, when he was asking Lachlan about um, armbar defense, he was having a problem getting armbar all the time. And Lachlan basically said, instead of investing, like you can always just go and invest 30 hours into defending the armbar or, or escaping, I should say, just escaping an armbar. Or you could spend 15 hours training how never to get there to avoid the position entirely. So it's like, yeah, cool. Which one would you prefer? Yeah. That's an interesting point though, because I feel you do, you do have to do both. Mm. Right. I, I hate the, I don't hate the what if questions because sometimes, you know, there can be very relevant questions. The bit of a side note, what if questions suck when you're just, completely derailing the technique that's being taught you know it's uh it's kind of like you know you maybe you're maybe you're learning a a, a way to pull guard right so we're learning a particular way we're both starting standing i'm going to pull guard in this manner and then someone goes but what if they pull guard well, what if they don't, bro? Like, it, like those what if questions piss me off because it's yeah. complete. It's irrelevant, right? Yeah. But yeah, other what if questions are great. I I, think- agree, I agree with Lachlan. I think the the more towards the end of the fight, in terms of you losing, like you you spend less time working on that. So for example, I'm not going to invest my maximum amount of time in learning how to escape a fully extended armbar. Mm. You know, because it's like that's it's only a couple I'm one percent yeah. to to getting tapped anyway. And even if I'm crazy good at that one percent, the odds aren't in my favor. But it doesn't mean, you know, I still want to learn something 
to, from zero to a hundred. It's not like I go, all my effort is going to be zero to 70. Mm. And then, you know, once I pass 70, I'm You've got nothing. Cause yeah. I got nothing, yeah. you know, but of course you spend more time. It, like, it's like, yeah, it's the opposite. The graph would be the opposite. So they would just completely cross over and be opposite. I would invest yeah. 1% of my time at that 99%. You yeah. know, and spend 99% of my time at that 1%, you know, and, and work my way that way in terms of the amount of time I invest in certain, certain techniques. Yeah, totally agree. Right? Totally agree. Like, you know, tr- uh, triangle defenses for me personally, when I roll, I probably got three or four, right? And they're dependent on how deep you are in the triangle. I probably spend four times as much effort learning that first escape because it's the most important one like you Mm. know if you get crazy good at defending the triangle right at the initial uh triangle attempt you don't need the others yeah yeah, you shouldn't need the other ones but then i'm still going to spend you know about three times as much time on that next one twice you know and then yeah a little bit i think i've spent probably five times more time in a triangle you spend a lot of time in triangles. I bro. do, but I will say I got here today, and you were on the floor in a triangle by, your, <laughs> by yourself. I don't even know how, <laughs> like a pretzel. <laughs> I can't yeah. get up and be like oh, again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! I just yeah. bent over to pick up something, and I was one arm <laughs> in, one arm out. Triangle. <laughs> yeah, I spent a lot of fucking time in triangles, but I've gotten good at not getting triangled. You so have. If I if I get in a triangle in a comp, I'm I'm comfortable there. I'm not like you know I don't have that oh fuck moment in my mind. I'm like this is okay. I've been here before, and uh, in the last you're like this is my safe space. Yeah, I, I'm comfortable <laughs> here. Yeah, so long as I I you know can can maintain that position, I can get out. Like when I say maintain that position, maintain the my escape position. Yeah, I can get out. Just don't cut the corner. Yeah, don't, don't, don't cut don't, that angle. Don't turn the wrong way, bro. Yeah, oh, that happened to me the other day as well. I was I got real confused. I was real tired and I was like in a triangle for too long and I got confused because my escape wasn't working. So I went the wrong way and it instantly got tired. And I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, I'll go back the other yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. I mean, I mean, it's happened to me even before as a, as a higher belt where I haven't been in a triangle for ages and then all of a sudden I'm in one and I've like, You're like hang on a lost that muscle memory of which way to go or yeah. what's my defense. Yeah, I just turned know? toward the leg on my shoulder. So That's yeah, how I remember ov- it. Ov- yeah, obviously the 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 best uh, in theory it's like yeah, well, you know, if you can have 100% that you will never end up in that position. That's great. But that's mm. obviously, we know that's not true. Mm. You can't be 100%. I never end up in this position. So you have to have something, but yeah, you're not going to invest your maximum amount of time in, in that, you know, it's mm. kind of like, okay, let's look at the buggy choke, right? Obviously it's been proven to be successful, even at the professional level. But if you invested most of your time in a buggy choke, you're then kind of you're in psych control, bro. Yeah, you're investing your time in being in psych control on the bottom. Yeah, like you know, it's, you, I think it's a very dangerous game to think you're going to let someone pass you so you can buggy choke them. Mm. You know? Yeah, I would not recommend that. Yeah. And buggy chokes can be very painful on yourself. We have someone in the gym who thinks he broke his own arm by buggy choking. You serious? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! Because he's like, shit. you know, because you how the buggy choke works yeah. and he's connecting and he's ripping on it. It's his own shin smashing into ah. his forearm and he's broken that bone before. And he's like, it feels very similar to when I Damn, broke it. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I, in, a, in a side note, a, a meal, a white belt would try to buggy choke me last night. Oh, did he? It was so funny because I knew what he's doing. So obviously I stopped him and then I, I just like, Looked at him dead in the eyes, like, did you just try and buggy choke me? He's like, <laughs> no, <laughs> like all sheepishly. Uh, I tried to buggy choke Big Eric the other day. Yeah, fuck Eric. Did it work? Eric's our guy that everyone's like, fuck Eric. Yeah, yeah. No, like, like kind of like fuck, fuck Craig Jones, but fuck Eric. Yeah, but yeah. Eric's cool. No, nah, Craig. <laughs> Craig's cool. <laughs> Craig's cool. <laughs> Sorry, he doesn't listen to this. I checked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think that. I mean, in this episode, we sort of, in a roundabout way, got to the the key, the three key main points that that I think that you wanted to get across. Yeah, I mean, I They're can't really conceptual. hammer. I can't really hammer home more the number one point, which is it's just just constantly 
fucking harder, bro. Yeah. It's it's constantly harder. Your blue belt is not the peak of Everest, mm. right? And it's not like you get halfway up Everest and you're like, it all of a sudden got easier. Yeah. Like, no, man. Like you just arrived at base camp. Yeah, yeah. Like it's only getting harder. Congratulations. You got your blue belt. That's awesome. But now you've like, you got in. Yeah. Right. You passed the entrance exam. Now- and some people even argue that whole sort of cliche of like the real journey begins at black belt, you know, as in like, you know, or people say like there's black belts and there's black belts, which for yeah. sure is true, right? Yeah, you know, totally. There's there's guys who are black belts, but then there's those, the guys who are making podiums in competitions. Yeah, we had a saying Ooh, in the Navy that was um, effectively, it goes, there's rank within rank, which means like, and this was a kind of like a fuck you thing that a senior lieutenant would say to a junior lieutenant, like, particularly if that junior lieutenant used to be, you know, under this lieutenant, it's been said to me before, like after I got promoted, it's like, yeah, okay. Technically we're the same rank, but there's rank within rank, bitch. You still, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. still pecking order. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and it's the same, same at a uh, at black belt. There's levels to the game. That's my favorite sort of thing. They're essentially saying to you, you're still a bottom. Yeah. You're still a bottom <laughs> bitch. Like, yeah. And I say that in my mind all the time. Like whenever I'm like in a tough role with someone, my rank or wh whoever, or whatever it is, it doesn't need to be my rank. I just have to keep telling myself like there's levels to the game, son. And you aren't on my level. Yeah. Like that's a, a my mantra I have to say. Yeah. And I think that's the, the key really the 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 most important thing to get on board with mm. and even if you're a hobbyist that's fine but for like your i'm not saying you now have to train like a professional athlete but if you were training with your hobbyist effort to get to blue belt now you need your hobbyist blue belt effort which yeah. is big which is more than your hobbyist white belt like again it's all relative like so for you mm. as an individual it needs to be more it's kind of like as a space analogy you know when they're like launching shuttles into space they need to achieve a certain velocity to break through it's like breakthrough velocity it's kind of like that but with your S effort escape velocity escape velocity yeah of, of course escaping orbit yeah so you need you know, in, in this analogy, your- This analogy is already terrible because once you're Oh, come on, man. Because <laughs> still let me give a chance. <laughs> hang on, let me already- Fuck, man. Let me <laughs> 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 hang on. Like, well, you've- well, Fix you've my come analogy, to, Adam. Come on. Well, I mean, your, ana your analogy is all, all wrong because once you're in the vacuum of space, right? Like you I'm don't I'm talking need about getting to that- Point. Yeah, but okay, then once you're in – what belt are you once you're in space? I don't know, black belt. Shut yeah. up. Because <laughs> if blue belt Shut is up, getting to space, then you're just fucking coasting because you're in the vacuum of space. It's not like – it's okay. not like a rocket right. continues <laughs> to propel to make it out to, you know, when they send shit to Mars. Like they do – okay, we're getting way All off right, topic. Elon with Musk, settle down over there. Gravity assist and shit. But the point I'm saying is like – Keep keep my analogies to myself. Is that the point? Pretty much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for listening. You to tried to tie it into the fact that we've got a rocket on our podcast. No, that, oh, actually, yeah. No, I didn't even think of that. Um, anyway. Look, I'll put some work into some space analogies and get back to you. All right. Get back to me on that one. Yeah, thanks, cool. Ads. Just uh, yeah, get back to me. <laughs> thanks for listening to this episode of the Beyond Jiu-Jitsu podcast, episode number 63. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to support the show, you can do so in on our Instagram, which is at Beyond Jiu-Jitsu underscore podcast. And we are accepting audio questions for episode number 70. We are only accepting. Only accepting. Questions. It's coming up I quick. Hope. Well, we, I we mean, need if some... we get none. Then... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like me with different accents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> this is Francis. <laughs> oh, that was fucking bad. Anyway, uh, we're accepting audio questions for the next Q&A episode, episode number 70. So please, uh, you can find the link in our link tree, it's the number one link, first link, submit audio questions. And if you want to support the show, we have a Patreon, completely optional, but we do um, monthly AMAs on our Patreon. We just did this month's AMA, which is what's on the top of my mind. So if you want to get amongst that, uh, we do. We have all sorts of goodies on our Patreon. So you can find that as well in our link tree. And, and like like you said at the start, for anyone who's watching the watching slash listening to the podcast on YouTube, they would have noticed the, the multiple camera angles. If yeah. we get enough support, we can get three cameras, four cameras, five cameras, five cameras. One. Everyone gets a camera. Every, yeah, everyone, <laughs> you have a camera, yeah. you have a camera, you're an asshole, you have a camera. <laughs> it's only two of us, so we trust the asshole. But if you enjoyed the, or, or you have any feedback on the new sort of video approach we're taking, let us know in the comments on YouTube. And uh, yeah, until next time. Just tape it. Just tape it. That's a thing. That's my thing. It's a thing now.